new videos every day. Hi, I'm Radhi Iglis. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist, and today we are continuing our conversation about carbohydrates. Remember, we were talking about the string of pearls, the saccharides that are broken down into a monosaccharide or a single sugar, which converts to a glucose, which makes ATP, which makes energy. Remember that? Okay, and then we were talking about the regulatory system, how the body hormonally regulates our glucose. Remember, we only have about the equivalent of one teaspoon of glucose, glucose, glucose in the body at all times. So where does the rest go? Well, excess goes, it is converted into what we call glycogen. Glycogen is stored in the liver and in the muscle but we only store about a thousand calories worth of glycogen. So if we are not doing marathon running and we're carbo loading, uh, we are going to store um, only uh, up to our, our limit and the rest is converted into fat. So remember the liver uh, converts that glucose into glycogen and back and forth. And this is a regulatory system that is tightly controlled by insulin. All right. We talked about the problem with insulin when we have, when we are eating simple sugars, those monosaccharides that need very little digestion. They get into the blood sugar too rapidly. They don't enter in in a slow pace. And so therefore what happens is we get an onslaught of glucose. Remember, we only need one teaspoon of glucose. So the body tries to regulate it by secreting from the pancreas insulin. Insulin is the key that unlocks the door that lets glucose into the cell to be converted into ATP, into energy. Remember? Okay. So now here we are. We've got um, a teeter-totter. We need an equal amount of glucose, equal amount of insulin. If we have too much glucose, too little insulin, this is diabetes or hyperglycemia. If we have too little sugar, too much insulin, this is hypoglycemia or hyperinsulinemia. And we were seeing that really the diseases today, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, type 2 diabetes, obesity, elevated lipids like cholesterol and triglycerides, these are all related to insulin. They're all related to your hormone response to sugar. Very, very important. And I'm not talking about necessarily um, just sugar, white table sugar, but all of the carbohydrates. We, we respond or we produce the more simple sugars we take in at one time. Remember, it's all about timing, all about timing. It's not necessarily about calorie. It's all about timing and it's all about your metabolic rate. If you've got a metabolism that's, that's burning at the rate of a candle versus a furnace, you're going to be storing a lot more fat. Okay. Now here's the problem. He, now wouldn't, I, I said before, remember we have two teams of energy. We have our first line of energy, which comes from carbohydrates. And then we've got the boy sitting out on the curb, drinking coffee, waiting for the job, right? That's our stored energy, our fat. Wouldn't it be a better idea to use our stored energy instead of constantly telling the host, you, to take in more simple carbohydrates. But how does that happen? Why do we do that? Well, the reason why we do that is because when we are producing too much insulin, insulin's job is to drive blood sugar out of the blood so we get a hypoglycemic response. It tells the boys upstairs, air traffic control, we've got an emergency going on. We've got to get glucose into the system because we've got too much insulin happening. We've got a hypoglycemic response. So it tells you, the host, feed me and feed me now. I do not have time to make a nice protein meal. Give me that bag of cookies. Give me that bag of chips. Give me that soda pop. Give me that caffeine. I need energy now. And that's what happens, especially in the later part of the day. That's what's going on. So basically, as I said, these diseases, especially um, uh, around the midriff, obesity around the midriff is a sign of hyperinsulinemia. Now, there is another problem, and this is called insulin resistance. And what this is, is remember, we've got on the cell, we've got a door, we've got a, a receptor site or a lock. 
we've got the key, which is insulin. Now, supposing through years and years and years of secreting these keys, making these keys, making these keys, and they're going into the lock and they're jamming the locks, right? And the locks are getting all bent out of shape. So now we've got the keys coming in, but they can't get into the lock to open the door. This is called insulin resistance. All right. Now, what's the problem? Well, the problem is, remember, we've got this whole thing going. We've got blood sugar in the blood and it's insulin's job to open the door to the cell to get blood sugar out of the blood and into the cell to make energy. Right. But now we've got broken locks. OK, so we got keys, but they're not doing their job. So again, air traffic control gets this message. Whoa, we've got way too much blood sugar going on here. We've got to get this door open send a message to the pancreas, more, make more keys. Pancreas says, well, we are making keys. Well, apparently they're not doing anything because we've still got all this glucose in the blood, so make some more. So we make some more and it starts this vicious circle. This is called insulin resistance. You might have heard that term. The older we get, the more susceptible we are to insulin resistance, which causes eventually cardiovascular disease, elevated lipids, hypertension, um, midriff obesity, and diabetes, adult onset diabetes. So here's the problem. We go back and we say, well, all right, wouldn't it be a better idea to use the stored fat, the guys on the curb, to do the energy of building the house? Let's use those guys, right? So how this works, you've heard of the term triglyceride, right? Triglyceride is a blood fat, and this is the fat that is actually gets down to the cell and into the mitochondria, remember the mitochondria is the power plant, the furnace of the cell. So that triglyceride, it comes to the cell wall and it knocks on the door. And tri means three. So there's three fat molecules. And there's an enzyme, right? And that enzyme does the job of breaking those three, those triglycerides into individual fat molecules. So it takes one little fat molecule and puts it in a cart and starts to ship it to the mitochondria. Now that cart you may have heard of is L-carnitine. Now some of you guys who work out at the gym or have trainers or are in sports nutrition, you have heard, or maybe your nutritionist has told you, especially if you're, if you're wanting more energy or building lean muscle, you want to do L-carnitine. Well, now you know what L-carnitine is. It's the shuttle, we call this actually a carnitine shuttle, that carries the fat, the triglyceride, into the cell, the power plant, into the mitochondria to burn as fuel, right? So what happens? Well, as it's converting, as it's shipping these little fat molecules into the cell to be burned, it's got a regulatory system, right? It's got a little sort of border patrol. And if the hormone that's on duty at that particular time is insulin, it says, stop, we don't need any more energy, send that fat back into the blood and store it. This is why insulin actually blocks fat from being metabolized. So this is a problem. This is why insulin is a fat storing hormone. It gives the message, we've got too much energy, send that back. It's kind of a little uh, border patrol between the carnitine shuttle and the mitochondria. Now, remember I told you in tape one that there were two hormones that were secreted from the pancreas. We're all familiar with insulin. We've all heard of that because we've heard of uh, diabetes. And when you get diabetes and you have no insulin, you have to inject insulin from the doc. Okay. But what we don't hear about too much is um, a glucagon. All right. Glycogen, again, is that stored glucose. So don't be confused. Glucagon glycogen. So glucagon is the opposite of uh, insulin. It actually does the opposite. Remember that border control, if, if, if patrol, if insulin is blocking fat from going into the mitochondria to be burned as fuel, glycogen, on the other hand, actually pushes fat, helps to burn fat for fuel. So it is the opposite. 
And basically where glycogen comes in is when we're in a fasting state. Now I'm not talking about uh, fasting like Mahatma Gandhi type fasting. I'm talking about in between meals when we no longer have glucose storage and we need to convert it and we need to convert something else such as fat um, into energy, right? So glucagon is the hormone that actually helps the, the fat into the mitochondria. Now let's recap here for a second. Insulin is stimulated by an intake of carbohydrates, especially simple carbohydrates overstimulates insulin. Glucagon is stimulated by guess what? Protein. I have just told you what the theory of the Atkins diet is all about. Okay, now you know what it's all about. Now I'm not a proponent of Atkins. All right, I think it's too out of balanced. But what Adkins was trying to say is the reason why we want to curtail the carbohydrates and raise the protein is because we lower the insulin and raise the glucagon. So we lower the fat storing hormone and raise the fat burning hormone. And that's the whole principle behind uh, Adkins. Again, I'm not a fan of Adkins. I think it's too much protein. I think that you end up um, having a problem later on down the line, possibly with kidney and uh, too much of an acid. Uh, uh, protein causes an acid um, pH in the blood. There's all kinds of problems with that. I think a balance of carbohydrate protein is really important. But I've given you this idea so that you can now understand what the principle was. I think that there's other problems with Atkins diet. What happens is later on when you start bringing carbohydrates into uh, the diet, then you start getting a fat rebound system. So a lot of people who have done Atkins, then they start back on a normal diet. They start to get uh, put on fat again. We're going to talk about weight loss in regards to that at another time. I, I love to hear your comments. Please don't give me a lecture on Adkins because I am not a proponent of Adkins. I am just telling you that that's the basic principle of Adkins, that glucagon is a fat burning hormone, insulin is a fat storing hormone. Obviously, what we have to do is get control of our insulin. And how do we do that? Well, first of all, if we're going to have carbohydrates, like I said in the beginning, they need to be the long string of pearls. They need to be whole grains. They need to be whole vegetables. All right. Because, and as I said before, my rule is if it's popped, puffed, flaked, floured, shredded, or instant, it's been refined. Now, what does that mean? Now, let's just take popcorn, for example. Lots of people used to think that popcorn was a good diet food, and mostly because the dietitians are all worried about calories. And it's, again, we talked about the logs. It's not about the calories. It's about your metabolism. Yes, if your metabolism is burning at the rate of a candle, yes, you need to reduce your calories. But how do you keep a fire burning, you Girl Scouts out there? You have to feed the fire. You cannot reduce the calories so much that you put the fire out. And this is a problem with these weight loss programs. Basically, what happens is if you're not getting enough protein, for example, protein, remember, we talked about essential amino acids, essential protein, essential fatty acids. Okay, these are essential. You must have them. These amino acids are vitally important for your hormones, for your metabolism, for your, for your blood production, for your, for your building materials, including your neurochemistry and everything else. The body will spare its muscle. It will tear down its muscle if it doesn't have enough protein. When you start reducing your calories down so much to a dangerous level that you don't have enough protein resources for amino acids, the body will start to lose weight but it loses lean muscle. It doesn't burn fat. So we have to really start to understand how the metabolism works and rethink how a healthy way of losing weight. Another thing about, um, about carbohydrates is, and I started to say, a lot of people will, will take a food such as popcorn or rice cakes. There's another one, which is puffed rice. Well, Look what happens. You take corn, which 
actually we were talking about corn in the grain. It, it is a, a complex carbohydrate, but when you pop it, pop it, pop it, you actually explode it into a whole bunch of smaller saccharide molecules. So you've converted a complex carbohydrate of corn in its original grain form into a exploded simple sugar problem. Now, they also, you know, the, the logic is take fat out of the diet and then, oh, you're, you're, you're going to rid yourself the problem of, of obesity and cardiovascular disease. Wrong. This is, this is a misconception. And I talked about fat in another, uh, in another lecture, the truth about fats. Take a look at that and what fat is all about. But understand that <clears throat> fat and fiber are extremely important when you're dealing with carbohydrates as well as protein. You really want a balance. Okay. So if you take fat out of the diet, a lot of people say, well, and I still, even today, after all of the, all of the lectures and education that we've now got available to us, people are still proud of saying, well, Radia, I'm eating fat free foods. I'm eating fat free cookies, fat free ice cream. As long as you take the fat out of the diet, you'll be, you'll be healthy and lose weight. Wrong. Because remember, what we were talking about. Insulin is a fat storing hormone. If you take carbohydrates in, you're going to produce or stimulate insulin. Now, supposing you have a fat free cookie, right? Fat, you've only got three things. You've only got carbohydrate, protein, and fat. If you take the fat out of the cookie, you've only got two things left. Chances are that cookie isn't loaded with protein. So what has it got left? The only thing to give it any kind of taste or consistency is sugar. And I don't mean complex sugar. I mean simple sugar. So as you take in the simple sugar, you're going to stimulate insulin. Insulin's a fat storing hormone. Bingo. These quote unquote fat free foods do not cause you to lose weight. It is a gross misconception. All right. So getting back to the puffed rice, puffed corn. These are not only not necessarily fat free. Yes, they're fat free, but they're, they're, you're not going to lose weight necessarily by consuming these because it's about your metabolic response to the food. It's not necessarily about the calorie. It's about your metabolic response. If you already have a pre setup of hyperinsulinemia or insulin resistance and you eat these carbohydrates that are exploded into simple sugars, what do you think is going to happen? Hello. I'll tell you an example. I had a friend of mine and she's been on a diet and all of this. She comes to me and she says, Roddy, I don't, I don't get it. I go to my favorite movies and I, I sneak in my popcorn because I don't want to eat that movie crap for $5 for a container this big. So she says, I sneak, I, and I air pop my popcorn. I don't use any fats. Um, and, and I try and get, you know, the leanest, I don't put any butter on it, you know, very little salt and I don't get it. I get halfway through the film and invariably I fall asleep. What's up with that? And I said, well, you're having a hypoglycemic response. Well, what do you mean from the popcorn? Well, how is that? Because you're eating a whole bunch of simple sugars and because you've taken the fat out of it, Basically, there is fiber in the, in the, um, popcorn, but it's still a simple sugar. So I said, here's what I want you to do. You can pop your popcorn, but I want you to pop it in good oil, like coconut oil. And I want you to put a little bit of organic butter on it. She said, okay. So she did. And guess what? She stayed awake through the film and she came back and said, I can't believe it. That's, that's all I did. And, and I didn't get sleepy and I didn't crash. The reason why is because the, the fat coats the carbohydrate. Also the, the fiber. Um, it coats it and causes it to have to digest slower. So it enters into the bloodstream at a slower rate, right? So whenever you add a protein or fat to a carbohydrate, you slow it down and it doesn't hit the bloodstream like injecting it right into the blood. It slows it down. The body can release insulin at a slower rate. You're not going to get literally an insulin shock 
because it's a slower rate of digestion. Now, if I, is a disclaimer, am I telling you to put a whole bunch of butter on your big popcorn and that's okay? No. Hello. I'm trying to give you the principles of how your metabolism responds to these carbohydrates. And you don't want to, you don't want to necessarily eat popcorn or puffed rice. If it's pop, puff, flake, floured, shredded, or instant, it's been refined. So those long chain, that long pearl, has been broken down into simpler sugars. The simpler the sugar, the faster it enters into the bloodstream. The more you release insulin, the more it's a fat-storing hormone. You get a vicious circle, and you know the rest of the story. I hope that has helped in clearing up what the story is with carbohydrates. We will talk more about the glycemic index and fiber and all of these other things and what are the better sugars. If you're going to do sugars, what are the, the least? We're going to talk about that at another time. Thanks for joining me. I'm Radia Gleese. We'll see you next time. If you liked this video, we have hundreds of more alternative videos ranging from sexual health to psychology to mind control so if you liked it go ahead and click on me to enter the psyche truth channel